Welcome to the Exploratory. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the tools and workflows you can use when you're collaborating with your teammates in Postman. When you're working on an API, a collection, or any other element like a flow or a mock server, Postman enables you to work together across your organization right in the app. This way, you can keep moving and stay as productive as possible without having to jump between multiple apps and tools. For this demo, I'm going to create a new team and set up a workspace that I can share with my teammates. Here I am on the home page, and to create my first team, I can click the Create Team button to start the process. If you already belong to another team, you won't see this button here. So in that case, to create an additional team, you would select your profile image, and you'll have the option to create a new team in this dropdown. So I'll select Create Team, and it's going to ask me if I want to move my current workspaces to the new team, or if I want to keep them separate. I do want to share what I've been working on in my personal workspace, so I will choose to move it. So now I'll select Set Up Team, and Postman will continue creating the team and set up a team workspace. Postman will generate a random team name for you, and I happen to like this one, so I'm going to leave it, but you can change this to whatever you want your team name to be. You can also select a URL, and you can upload a logo if you want to. And I want to move my current collection over to the team, so I'll click Select Collections, choose the collection I want to move out of my personal workspace, and click Confirm. For team discovery, if you want your team to be visible to other people within your organization, toggle the switch on. When it's off, other members of your organization won't see this team listed and they won't be able to send requests to join. I could go ahead and invite my teammates now, either by email or link, but I'm gonna hold off and do that later. So now I'm in my workbench and I can see that my collection was imported. My collection has these two HTTP requests that make calls to the Open Trivia Database API. This first request I added makes a call to get a random easy a trivia question. So let's try it out. And I can see the trivia question and the response here. Let's try again. And the other request I added to this collection is pretty similar, but it'll only pull trivia questions about board games. So try that one. So I'd like to get some feedback from one of my teammates on this collection, so it's time to invite them to the workspace. From here, the fastest way to do that is by using the invite button in the upper right of the screen. I have a few options for sending the invitation, and all of them will grant the user access to this workspace, and they'll automatically join my team as well. So I can enter their email address. I could also copy the invite link to send to them directly. Or if I had a lot of users to invite, I could upload a CSV file here. On a free plan, only the admin workspace role is available, but on a paid plan, you would have additional access control options here. So now that I've invited my teammate to join the workspace, I will head back to the workbench and take another look at the collection I was working on. Sometimes you'll need to collaborate on a collection with users who are outside of your team. A quick way to do this is using the share button. I can directly share by email or link, which will invite them to join the team unless I toggle the switch to invite them as a guest. I can also create a run in Postman button, which provides a shortcut to the collection that you can embed in documentation or include in a readme. And this can be restricted to your team or it can be made public. Another option is to create a link to the collection JSON which is publicly accessible to anyone who has the link, but the data is read-only. And finally, I could move this collection to a public workspace if I wanted anyone on the public API network to be able to fork and use it. One last option for sharing collection data is to export the collection JSON. I can find that in the More Options dropdown under Export. You can re-import exported collections into other workspaces. So earlier, I sent an invitation to one of my other accounts to join this workspace, so I'll go ahead and accept that. Now I'm logged in as the other user, and I can see my profile image up here that shows me as the active user. And if I click on it, I can see a list of the inactive members, which is just anyone who belongs to the workspace but doesn't currently have it open. This is a quick way to see who's currently active, which you might want to know about if you have multiple people making changes in the same space. 
I'm going to try sending the random trivia request again as the new user. So you can see that the experience is the same for me as the newly invited user as it was for the original user who created the workspace and added the collection. Send the other one. So one thing that can be really useful when working with your team in Postman is comments. You can leave comments on collections, folders, and requests. And you can mention specific teammates to notify them. So my team has not done a good job documenting this collection, so I'm going to ask my teammate to add some documentation. So I just added that comment to the collection, but I can comment on requests as well. I have some questions for my teammate about this request, so I'll select the comment icon in the context bar again and start another comment thread here. So now let's talk about version control. As the second user, I want to propose some changes to this collection. And even though I have access and I could just make the changes right here, I want my teammate to have a chance to review it. So I'm going to open the More Options menu and select Create a Fork. Since I know that I want my teammate to review this pull request right away, I'm going to create the fork in the team workspace. If I wanted, I could create the fork in my personal workspace and then move it over only when I'm ready to create the pull request. And I can see a label next to the collection name that reminds me that this is a fork, just in case I forget which is which or forget where this collection came from. So I noticed that I don't have a lot of, I don't have any tests set up for these requests. So I'm going to add at least a status code check to both of them. Okay, so I'm ready to integrate my changes back into the original collection. First, when you're working with other people, it's good practice to pull changes to make sure that your fork is in sync with the original collection. Then I'll go back to the menu for this collection and select Create Pull Request. And I'll include a title and description. And I have the option to choose specific reviewers. So my teammate can log in and select the Pull Requests icon and see my open pull requests. They can review my changes, make comments, and if they think it looks good, they can click approve or just go ahead and merge. The merge options basically boil down to merge changes into the source, merge changes and also do a pull at the same time to keep the fork up to date, or merge the changes and delete the fork. And this version control workflow is not just for collections, you can follow the same process for environments. So if I want to see what's changed in my workspace recently, I can take a look at the change log. With the collection selected in the sidebar, I will go over to the context bar on the right and select the change log icon, which looks like a clock moving backwards. And I can see all the changes that my team members have made here. So now that we've gone through the collaboration workflow, let's take a look at some of the team and workspace management options. We can start with collection roles. I'm going to hover over the collection, open the dropdown, and select Manage Roles. By default, the roles for collections are inherited based on the overall workspace settings. Paid plans will see additional role options in this dropdown. Now let's look at the workspace settings. So over here on the right side of the workbench, I'll click Workspace Settings. Here I can change the visibility. A few of the options are grayed out, like I can't take one of my team workspaces and convert it to my personal workspace. A few other options aren't available because they only apply to paid plans, but I do have the option to make the workspace public, which means it'll be visible to everyone on the public API network. This is a great thing to do once I'm further along in development and ready to share my work with consumers. Even though anyone can view the workspace after making it public, only my team members can make changes. Next, I can invite additional team members using the same workflow as I did with the invite button earlier. On a free plan, everyone will have the admin role, but paid plans will have additional options. I can also manage what the sidebar looks like for the rest of my team. This can help me streamline the view for my teammates to make sure they have quick access to the elements they're working on in Postman. For example, if I know my team is working with collections and building flows, I can toggle those switches to align with our current team workflow and I can come back and change these at any time as our priorities change. So if we start developing an API later, I'll come back and I'll turn this one on. 
And finally, I can click delete workspace if I want to destroy this workspace and its data forever. There's no coming back from this, so before you press this button, be absolutely sure that that's what you want to do. Now I'll take a quick look at my team settings. I'll go up to this menu on the top right, and now I have the option to click Manage Team. I can also see my team's resource usage at a glance here. The resource limits you see depend on your Postman plan. So this is where I can manage all of my team settings. First, I can invite additional members to the team and I can manage their roles. Unlike workspaces where on the free plan everyone is an admin, I have a little more control over team roles. Developers can work on resources like collections, environments, workspaces, and so on. Admins can manage who's on the team as well as roles and permissions. And people with the billing role can manage your team's Postman plan. I'm not going to go through all the settings on the sidebar. A lot of them are pretty straightforward and have links to the Learning Center if you need more information. And a bunch of these also only apply to paid plans, things like security permissions, audit logs, fine-tuning rules and permissions. On a free plan, I can customize my team's profile, install apps that will integrate with Postman, and set up authorization to help users get started with the APIs I create. So those are some ways you can stay efficient and stay productive when you're working with your teammates and Postman. We looked at how you can create and manage a team, set up access to the elements in your team workspace, handle version control across your team, and share your work with external collaborators. Now let's get back to building together in Postman.